It's convenient to ignore it. It's convenient to ignore 3.4 million Christians genocidally exterminated in Sudan, nearly 1 million since the late 60s genocidally exterminated in Nigeria, 300,000 genocidally exterminated in East Timor. Several months ago I was speaking in Indonesia, 3,000 churches have been burned to the ground in the last three years. But if Israel shoots one terrorist, the world is up in arms. It's an occupation, our president said day before yesterday. An occupation. It's something called archaeology. Interesting study, archaeology. Archaeology tells me that Hopi Indians and Apache Indians were in Arizona long before Europeans or Asians or blacks, Hispanics. Don't get me wrong, I have no problem with a Afro-American or a Hispanic American or a European American or an Asian American living in Arizona. But don't tell me an Apache is an occupying presence. How can an indigenous people logically be called an occupying presence? A Maori cannot occupy New Zealand. An Apache cannot occupy Arizona. But according to the President of the United States, a Jew can occupy Bethlehem. No, it's not biblical. It's not fair. But it isn't even logical. I'm no fan of Voltaire. He was a godless man, but he was right about one thing. History is the lie everybody agreed on. I'm no fan of Nazis, but Goebbels was right about one thing. If you tell a lie often enough, people will think it's the truth. But let's continue. What happens after Israel withdraws from Gaza? The first thing happened was they closed all the Christian bookshops. And Hamas began persecuting Christians, saying, we're going to take your children and kill you. They should become a Muslim. That wasn't reported by the media. That's what they did in Lebanon after Bush Sr. gave them Lebanon. That's what they did in Gaza after Bush Jr. gave them Gaza. What do you think they're going to do in Hebron, Bethlehem, and Nablus if the American government has its way? What will happen to our brethren in Christ? They will turn their backs, not simply on Israel, but on the persecuted church. Why? The Bush dynasty is simply a dynasty, like any other political dynasty. It began with Prescott Bush, the grandfather of the present president, the United States Senator. He was director of a company whose assets were confiscated by the American government in 1942 because they were business partners with Nazi interests who were financially structuring the Third Reich. Now it's the Carlton Group, former Secretary of State James Baker, the lawyer for Saudi Arabians in the class action suit against the 911 victims' families, is the general counsel of the Carlton Group, of which the Bush family are senior investors, co-investors in partnership with the House of Saud. The same people responsible for the floggings, for the decapitations, for the imprisonment of our brethren, the religion of peace. But this is only politics and politicians. These are only the oil whores of corporate America. My concern is the church. Go on any human rights website. Documenting the persecution of Christians in the Islamic world, the statistics are shocking. But if you ask the question, we are being told repeatedly that it is a religion of peace and tolerance by the left-wing media, by the White House, by the academics, by the Council of Islamic American Relations. We're a religion of peace and tolerance. I've been to Morocco. I've been to the Persian Gulf. I have been to Egypt. I have been to Turkey. I have been to Brunei. I have been to Malaysia. I've been to Indonesia. I've been from one end of the Muslim world to another. I've been to many Muslim countries. I've been to most Muslim countries many times. If it is a religion of peace and tolerance, how come I have never found one Muslim country 
that will give Christians and Jews the rights we give them here. Not one! You can't ask that question. It's not politically correct. We're expected to be stupid. Religion of peace and tolerance? There are nearly four times as many conflicts in the world today involving Islam as all of the other religio people groups put together. By some estimates, upwards of 80% of the conflicts in the world involve Islam. We just began a new orphanage in Tanzania, infringing Saudi-funded Islamic fundamentalism, persecuting Christians throughout Africa, Malawi, Tanzania, Kenya, getting worse as we speak. What does our government say? Nothing. Islamists call for the elimination of Christians in Pakistan. You know how many Christians are killed in Pakistan? They're our allies. Let's talk about moderate Muslims. Countries that receive economic aid from America, like Egypt and Jordan. You become a Christian in Egypt or Jordan, you will be arrested. Even in Egypt and Jordan, there are hundreds and hundreds of honor killings of women annually. These are the moderate Muslim countries. Forget about Iran. Forget about Saudi Arabia and some of the Emirates. But again, these are just politicians. Islam's well-financed campaign with petrol dollars, as Bridget so aptly explained last night, is making tremendous inroads into the Western world, now America, but I live in England. Firemen, firefighters in England have to attend Islamic awareness seminars. What does that have to do with putting out fires? Except the ones that they set when they put bombs on the subways in London. Take an airplane, better show up early, take your shoes off. Islam likes to take their shoes off. No warrant, no right of search without warrant, that's suspended now. However, most of the complaints made against the TSA are made by Muslims. You're discriminating against us, you're singling us out, again funded by CAIR and others like them. 